Hello everyone, it's good to be back. I just got back from Las Vegas. I live in Ontario, Canada. I drove over 7,000 kilometers in just over two weeks. The purpose of this trip was my wife and I celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary on Valentine's Day. After our adventures in Colorado and Utah, my wife flew home from Las Vegas and I drove Eddie back to Ontario. So the purpose of this video is to show you how I prepared for the trip. My own little research and development. Some things I rushed to get done just so we could have them. For example, uh, being able to have a hot shower, even though it was not going to be my permanent solution for the uh, shower, but uh, it worked and I'll show you how I did that. I'm gonna show you the new hitch that I have on Eddie, uh, storage box, um, where I put the spare tire, a lot of safety devices that I have for um, stopping on the highway that I actually had to use. So we got a lot to cover, let's jump into it and we'll start with outside of the trailer. So this is my new hitch from Lock and Roll and it is a fully articulating 360 degree hitch that has a 1100 pound tongue weight capacity and 11,000 pound trailer capacity. I needed to upgrade the coupler because when I first built the metal frame the coupler was an afterthought and I put a class 2 coupler on there which has a tongue weight capacity of 300 pounds and trailer capacity of 3,500 pounds and it was welded on. I left the three inch square tubing that was the tongue um, longer because I knew eventually I would be cutting it off but uh, at the time um, I didn't really put as much thought into it as I should have. So Eddie now weighs about 5,000 pounds and the tongue weight has been increasing all the time. The tongue weight's about 600 pounds and I knew it was going to increase a little bit because I put a storage box on the front of the trailer that now I can put all the scissor jacks in and the, um, you know, the blocks and uh, spare 2x4s and the actual tongue jack. Before I used to put it in a tote and I used to just throw it in the back of the truck and now I'm very happy that it has its own place right on the tongue of the trailer where it's easily accessible and I can keep um, a few tools in there too, which is it's really handy. But that has added to the tongue weight. So before I left on this trip, I knew that I was very concerned about maxing out and surpassing the capacity of the coupler that was on there. So I reached out to Lock and Roll and they were willing to work with me. They sent me what I needed and uh, I installed it literally two days before I left for the trip. Never towed the trailer once with this before I left for the trip. So I have put over 7,000 kilometers on this setup and I can tell you it was rock solid and I was extremely happy with it. I had my eye on this uh, setup for a long time. It just wasn't really a priority. I had always had some other things to do. So this is how it actually goes on the truck. I needed to jack up the height of it because the suspension on the trailer has been raised. So when I towed it uh, before, the trailer was actually tilted forward. On this trip, I didn't really uh, disconnect the trailer much from my truck. So it was nice to have the trailer ride flat so that when we pulled into a place to stay for the night, I didn't have to worry about adjusting it. It was fairly flat and a nice even surface to sleep on, that sort of thing. So how the lock and roll system works is now this is the new coupler on the trailer has a heavy duty bolt and it allows it to swivel. So all I do now is back up my truck and lower the trailer down and line up these two bolts with the attachment in the hitch of the pickup truck. Because it rotates around, I find that even if I back up the truck and it's a little off, I can rotate it in and um, align the bolt and the coupler fairly easily. Another nice thing about the design is these two brass colored metal plates flip down and there's a pin that goes in it to lock it in place but if for some reason if you lost that pin the way it's designed is that the coupler will not become unattached because it's locked in there even without the pin in place. Since I've been using Eddie I've been attaching the spare tire and the 20 pound propane tank to the tongue area of the trailer. Now I have the storage box there so I need a new place to put the spare tire. I had always envisioned building some sort of storage rack in the back but as the trailers evolved, I decided to put the solar panels back there and the water port is on the bumper, which I like. So I did my research and I just stumbled across this little device on Amazon. Quite frankly, it was just a simple attachment into a, a two inch uh, trailer hitch. And I liked the flexibility because if I, for some reason, want to use a bike rack, I could put the spare tire uh, up on my truck or something else. So it gives me flexibility that way. And it also kind of frees up this area. And I just think it looks nice and clean. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. I bought it myself on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in it, but uh, I thought it was a perfect solution for the spare tire. 
Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, we've got some freezing rain going on, some pretty heavy freezing rain. So um, I got my lav mic here, a couple of mics, so hopefully I can kind of sync all this and the audio is not too bad for you. But before we wrap up the outside of the trailer, I wanted to discuss some safety stuff that I, uh, I bought because I'm always paranoid about being on the highway, especially during uh, the winter time, traveling there in winter where you're more likely to be driving in the dark. Um, I'm, you know, always concerned of blowing out a tire and being stranded on an interstate having a switch tire and uh, not having uh, flares or, or being seen by people, right? So, so I just want to go through some of the gear that I brought on the trip and I kept in a, a tote on the, the rack of my uh, truck. I know this is very, uh, you know, gear heavy uh, video, but that's really what it's about. It's about just all the gear that uh, I decided to bring in preparing for this trip. This is what I'm trying to show you is the gear that I brought. And, uh, you know, I paid for a lot of this myself. It's not just some commercial. I'm trying to share with you some of the things that I think are great ideas to have. So I wanted to have some flares with me on the side of the road. I stumbled across these on uh, Princess Auto and I thought for a very inexpensive price, they're pretty handy. And what's pretty cool about them is they, uh, they have a magnet. So my truck's aluminum, but uh, they can actually stick to the side of a vehicle, which is, which is handy, but they also have this little base that has a magnet that sits in there. So you can set them up on the side road, much like you would do a flare to warn oncoming traffic that you know there's a vehicle uh, stranded on the side of the road right so maybe they don't seem too bright with this setup here but at nighttime you actually see the red light pretty good so also one of the things I've always been concerned about is my lights just for some reason going out on a trip and I've had some problems with my left turn signal for whatever reason I haven't really been able to solve the problem sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so before I went on the trip, I got some, uh, I think they call it dielectric grease. I'm not sure if that's a proper pronunciation, but it's a pretty common thing. So I um, put some of this in the terminals between my uh, truck and where the, um, the lights plug in on the trailer. And when I left for the trip, it solved the problem. My left turn signal worked great. I had full connections on my lighting, uh, you know, driving down the highway. It was perfect. So in the last morning before the trip, it was dark. I always check my lights before I hit the highway and the left uh, brake light was not functioning at all. You could see that it was getting a little bit of electricity. You could see it's somewhat lighting up and pretty much uh, non-functional. And uh, this thing here I bought just for that reason and it worked out uh, great. So I, this has got some uh, magnets on it. So I just slapped this on the back bumper of Eddie and um, you know you can have it as a straight light or a blinking light. So what I did was I just put it on the bumper and I was confident that uh, traffic could see us uh, as they were passing us and uh, especially in the dark I was really concerned that that would be a problem so again very very uh, cautious about Eddie because again it's my blood sweat and tears and uh, really really scared to get in an accident of any sort so um, you know big on trying to prevent that because I like these so much and how convenient they are I actually keep them in the console of my truck so they're really uh, handy and available as, instead of going up on the truck and digging through uh, the bin if um, I just needed something in a quick pinch and I actually found I used these when we got stuck in Utah um, we got caught going down the wrong way on a very scenic drive but there was no real place to turn around so one of the scenic lookouts I pulled into got stuck had to winch our way out of there um, but prior to pulling out onto the highway I ran down the, the highway kind of put these up so that um, when I was doing the u-turn with the trailer uh, oncoming traffic would, wouldn't be surprised and, and you know it was a tight turn around a corner so there's a lot of reasons that a lot of things could go wrong so I, I used these and uh, nice and bright and they worked and then I also carry this this uh, literally is a whole set of uh, turn signal device so again these have magnets they go on the bumper and there's uh, obviously some cable and it literally plugs into your um, vehicle and it acts as a backup in case for some reason your whole lighting system goes out on uh, the trailer. I originally bought these when I just had the metal trailer to get home because uh, I had the trailer welded at a shop and again um, wasn't necessarily thinking I was like oh how am I gonna get this thing home um, besides tying a, you know, a red flag to the back of it so I picked these up, put them on the trailer, and that's how I, I drove the trailer home. And I've had them since, but I mean, I really wouldn't go on a trip without them because it just makes sense, right? Always uh, be prepared in case there's kind of a little uh, 
unplanned event with your electrical system. So that's going to wrap up the outside of the trailer and all the safety equipment and things I used to get ready for the trip. And now we'll get inside the trail and I'll show you some of the things and some of the solutions that I came up with, again, in a time crunch so that we could have uh, some comforts in here. First thing is we'll discuss the shower. So this is a vent that I put in. So a coupler goes onto there, the fan goes into there. And the fan plugs into a 110 volt and that plugs in and that will exhaust the fumes from the Mr. Buddy heater. Okay, so these are um, two 20 liter water jugs that I have as our normal water supply. Normally they both are under here and the water pump runs into one of them. But with the shower system that I have set up, I'm going to leave one empty all the time because uh, this Mr. Buddy heater that I've been using for a shower in here, I say using, I've never actually used it yet. This will be the first time. But I have done tests on it at home and it will bump up the water temperature about 35 degrees. So this water is pretty cold. It's been underneath the trailer in uh, one of the containers. So when I did a test at home, it was 50. Um, running it once, got it to 85 which is like a, you know, a comfortable pool temperature, but we want a hot shower. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it twice. We're going to run it water from here. We're going to put it empty. And in theory, the water in here will be about 85. And then we're going to run it again. And then we're going to have our shower. So this is the pump that we're going to put into the water supply. There's an electrical plug and obviously a hose for the water. And this is the fan. Okay, so we got the exhaust going. So this unit, so this unit here has a little dispenser to show you. So if you just wanted hot water, you can use it as a little water tap, but it comes with a little shower head. So we're gonna do this. This is a quick release as well. And we're gonna put the shower head in here. And then we're going to run the water and cycle it and warm it up one cycle. And then when it's time, when that's done, we're going to switch barrels and we're going to have a hot shower. Okay, so water's coming out of there. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it warm? Warm, right? Yeah. It would probably be warm enough to have a shower, but we want a hot shower. So we're going to do it twice and we'll see how we do. So we'll Hello. see how long. First time doing it, so we'll see how this works. I'm going to add this shower <laughs> swag. Okay, so just, we ran it through once, and now that is the warm water in the bucket there. That is my exhaust fan getting rid of the fumes from the burner of the Mr. Heater. You're not supposed to run these inside, but these are the steps that we have. Got windows cracked. And now, we're going to be able to hop into the shower. That again is a work in progress. This is what I did for the trip, because I wanted to have a shower, but I wasn't, didn't have time to tile. So as I look back at that video footage, I just cringe on how um, rudimentary this setup is. It, it did work, it was very functional. We had a nice hot shower, but I am pretty confident in my ability, so I don't mind showing the world this setup is as bad as it is, because I think it's gonna be fun to look back at the finished product. And if you follow along with my videos, you're gonna look back and think, oh my God, I remember when he went to Utah, how his shower setup was. And hopefully what I'll show you, the finished product, a few months down the road, and uh, well, realistically, probably a lot, a lot more than a few months. But when it's the finished product, um, I'm gonna be proud to show you, and you'll have a fun time looking at the differences. I know I will, and um, you know that's what uh, my videos are all about. Uh, I show you the good, I show you the bad, show you everything in between, um, you know, to inspire you that uh, you know you can do this too. Uh, you just got to be uh, kind of fearless as far as uh, trying things and uh, sometimes they work sometimes they don't so that's what uh, that's what i like doing so i'm going to wrap up the video here i could go on about all the little things that i've done um, but i'll cover off some more things in future videos uh, the sink and the drainage system and, and where the shower drains and all that sort of stuff but i don't want this video to be too long so hope you got something out of it if you haven't already done so subscribe because uh, lots of adventure videos coming from this trip and more on the trailer and the trailer as you can see is nowhere close to be completed inside cupboards are going to be probably my next priority because i really wish i had some of my cabinets on this last trip 
So uh, anyways, that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.